It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Rowan Boyden, and this is uh, a Friday edition, weekend edition of 5.45 Live. Let's take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. Uh, first, we'll talk about the Brooks House project. Shum was in town for that. Of course, it's election season. That's about all anybody can talk about here. And there's some uh, bridge controversy in Newfane. All that and more. The goal is to do it in 15 short minutes, maybe less. We can get you out and enjoy the weekend. If you get the time and the attention span, stick with us right here on 545 Live. look back at a spooky edition of the 545 Live opening from last year's Halloween. Of course, uh, the uh, All Hallows' Eve is come and gone, but uh, we'd like to remember, Look, take a look back to last year. Welcome to a very spooky edition of 545 Live. Meow. I'm uh, tonight's host, Roland Boyden, alongside Vlasta Papelka. Maybe she just goes by cat these days. We're having a little Halloween fun here. The show, of course, our nightly news roundup on BCTV 545 Live. Lost at your first night at the desk. Joseph, my goodness. I didn't even expect you here. Ta-da. I was just talking about, uh, about the good fortune that folks in this area uh, received during Hurricane Sandy um, as uh, we managed to uh, get a little rain, a little wind, um, and under 1,000 folks without power, all of whom uh, got their electricity back within two days. Very impressive. Uh, we talked to Brattleboro Assistant Town Manager Patrick Moreland about this. It's, it's very nice to be able to say there was no flooding. Uh, there were no injuries reported. Um, so thankfully, uh, unlike uh, Irene, it'll be nice that a year from now we won't probably still be talking about Hurricane Sandy. Speaking of coverage, Joe, you were out uh, at the Brooks House yesterday mm -hmm. trucking through uh, the the insides of that building, which haven't been right. haven't seen the, the light of day or the, the light of a video camera in quite some time, but that's definitely one of the top news stories here. Let's start with the clip and then we can break it down. I think what this project really means is a downtown campus, housing, vibrant stores again, and a fresh start to one of the strongest downtowns in the state of Vermont. We got a bright future. Governor Shumlin in Brattleboro to hand off $750,000 in cash and a black briefcase to members of the... No. It was no. cash. And cookies. <laughs> That's right. Excellent cookies. So the state ponying up to uh, help with the Brooks House project, which is closing in on reaching the, uh, the financial goals they need to put this into action. And of course, uh, Vermont colleges uh, have signed the deal, inked the deal, to uh, include a downtown campus in Brattleboro. So it's going to be a booming um, area there. When that's all said and done. The Brooks House is the prime location in town. We can't have it sit there the way that it is. So part of this is an urgency that says you've got, we've got to we've got to move this forward as a community. So we're really, you know, looking forward to getting there and seeing those tenants in there and that place hopping. Well, speaking of Shumlin, who was in town, uh, he was also at the high school this morning to uh, hold an open forum, which was broadcast live on BUHS TV and subsequently on BC TV as he took a Q&A from the students, did his little Shum thing, speech thing about the tenacity of Vermonters. We caught a glimpse of it ourselves. Democracy only works when you get involved. And I want you all to give yourselves a hand for being the best example of how to get out there and make a difference. It is not big money. Vermont, and I want to tell you as a governor, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, speaking of Shumlin, you can see how this is going. I'm going to see how many speaking ofs I can do to transition us clip to clip. Uh, it was BUHS mock election day, and Obama handed Romney one of the most crippling defeats in the history no. of the presidential election. Let's see if we oh, can get the graphics up here on. on the screen and uh, take a look at, at what these kids uh, were talking about here when they uh, came out to, to vote in support of, uh, in this case, Where's our uh, election coverage? You can see on my shoulder, yeah. Tally? Oh. Eighty percent. So, so ninety percent of the kids came out and voted in the first place, which is pretty amazing. Excellent uh, turnout. Eighty percent of them probably uh, couldn't go home if they didn't, right? That's that's right. <laughs> uh, oh. That's what we need for the voters of this town. Eighty percent 
of those votes uh, went to Obama and Biden, and the uh, Romney-Ryan ticket picked up 7%. In uh, the gubernatorial and lieutenant governor race, uh, it was Shumlin winning with 56%, and uh, Cassandra Gikas, who took on the lieutenant governor statue with 62% of the vote. Uh, now, they had plenty more uh, results, and uh, they even... I was excited to see, uh, made their own little documentary about uh, the mock elections. Let's take a look. We are here for the mock election and to get votes from students and faculty and staff in UHS. A lot of the students here don't get to actually vote and it's a good way to get it so we have our opinion and we can see what this, if our school was in charge, then what would happen. Um, so I think it's really important to get kids active in politics even if technically this vote is not Who did you vote for? I voted for Obama. Joe, I believe you and maybe one Daryl Pillsbury are going to be up at the high school on election nights yes, uh, to glean some footage from town clerk Annette Cappy. Uh, that'll be a little after 7 as she reads the election results. I'll be live here at the desk starting right at uh, 7 p.m. that night next Tuesday. We should Tuesday. be able to beam in from there, shouldn't we, too? Yeah, for a it'll, live oh, it'll be live. That? Yep, so uh, I'll be hosting all the way from 7 to 7.30, which we'll include at some point in that uh, range, the elect local election results from this here town. And then at 7.30, we're going to turn it over to the folks, uh, the public access station in Burlington, Channel 17, where they're going to have uh, a three-hour live election coverage that will include national and local results. They'll be uh, broadcasting live uh, from all over the state, various races, Democratic and Republican headquarters. That should be an exciting time. It's excellent coverage. Um, but uh, in order to get some results, Joe, we got to have some people vote in the first place. And there's a lot of ways to do that, maybe more than some people realize. Let's uh, start by getting uh, Town Clerk Annette Cappy on to talk a little bit about right. how to do that voting. You can vote right up until 5 o'clock on Monday early if you want to vote in the Town Clerk's office, or if you want to come to the polls on Tuesday, the polls open at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we close at 7 and that's at the BUHS Gymnasium. All absentees go through just like regular ballots and need to be in by 7 o'clock on Election Day. I'm not sure uh, how many folks realize, Joe, that you can actually vote early just by coming here to the town clerk's office. I, in fact, have cast my ballot already as it... Uh, Tomorrow, proves, too, right? Proves, yeah. Saturday hours, too. Absolutely, and Monday. Uh, as Tuesday will prove a crazy day for us with all our live coverage, I thought I'd vote ahead, and it's it's awfully simple. I even meant to wear my, my I voted sticker. Oh, well. So get there, make sure uh, you get a chance to get represented and vote, uh, especially because there are some out there who can't vote, like the students at oh. Leland and Gray, uh, who, oh. despite uh, not being of the voting age yet, decided to host their own political forum on their campus, inviting representatives, Republican, Democrat, Independent, uh, and Liberty Union candidates from a variety of local races to uh, entertain questions from students. Let's take a look. All right. Okay. Let's begin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Leland and Gray's Political Forum. Please, when you ask a question, please make sure it's, in, it's relevant to that topic. No unnecessary questions like what's your favorite color and if you're married or so on and so forth. The growth and future of Vermont is not a partisan issue. It's an issue of how we do the best by our people. This is the symbol of Liberty Union, the um, turtle that probably won't get elected but is there with his unicorn horn, is prodding elephant dunk. Both parties have come up with some pretty ludicrous stuff. But I do want to say you should be quite pleased. The legislature in the state of Vermont does all that it can to represent all the people of the state of Vermont, regardless of party. Now, a gubernatorial hopeful Emily Payton has uh, taken to using tactics from candid camera to determine uh, just why third-party candidates were not invited to the gubernatorial debates hosted by many media outlets. Let's take a look. The CAX debate. What about equal time? There is an FCC rule about that. We just we have two candidates and. Um, those are the rules. There you go, that complete program produced uh, at Fact TV, just uh, north of here in Bellows Falls, uh, as gubernatorial helpful Emily Payton uh, continues her quest to find out why third party candidates are not receiving uh, uh, equal attention to the Democratic and Republican candidates in this race. 
All right, Joe, I just want to wrap up with a few more things. Uh, what do you got including left? Including the Hunter Brook Bridge in New Fane, which uh, has got a close to $600,000 oh. price tag oh. from, uh, the, from FEMA. Now, this money will come back through the town, but there are talks of uh, buying out the, the lone landowner who resides across the bridge, using the money to buy him out, uh, and finding different uses within the municipality for the, uh, the rest of that money. Now, uh, our latest hire at BCTV, Rich Melanson, has been trekking out through all of BCTV's seven surrounding communities to gather their select board meetings. Newfane has been a, uh, a hotbed of controversy that he's uh, frequented. We've got all of the latest Newfane select board meetings on that same brattleboro.tv.org if you want to check it out. But they've decided to take the bridge in question and uh, its fate, its destiny, to a townwide vote which was actually uh, this week, but postponed due to Hurricane Sandy. It'll be next uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. at the fire station in Newfane. Here's the background on it. The point there is not so much whether we should do this or not. Those issues are things that are the point of having a town meeting on the subject. It's not unlimited as far as time. FEMA doesn't just sit and say, we'll wait until you're ready to decide. If we don't, if we just, we have to decide what we're going to do one way or the other. Just a few more things to wrap up as we uh, trek through this extended Gallery Walk Friday mm -hmm. edition of 545 Live. Now there will be some uh, Vermont Yankee emergency sirens blaring tomorrow, but mm. it is not uh, an emergency, just a, a test. Now, uh, there's plenty of information about this posted on our Facebook page, which includes a special we taped uh, the last time the sirens went off and we decided to head out there with a camera. So if you want to head to our Facebook page and check that out, here's a sample of what uh, you'll get. We're getting ready for Vermont Yankees' uh, annual emergency siren test. There it goes! Oh my goodness! All right, Joe, we got to wrap up, but uh, on a sad note, a longtime community member and uh, community radio advocate Larry Block has passed mm -hmm. away after his struggle with cancer. He was uh, instrumental in taking Radio Free Brattleboro from a pirate radio station into a legitimately FCC-licensed station, WVEW, and uh, continued to work incredibly hard to keep that station operational. Um, yes, it did. He uh, played a, a big part in many a BCTV program as well. He'll be missed by not just members of uh, community media in this town, yeah. but uh, folks from, from all across the community. Here he is when he came in to do an interview about the importance of WVEW back in 2008. Broadway Community Radio is committed to all access, meaning every kind of show uh, and every kind of uh, age group and person and background. And that kind of diversity, that kind of amazing one hour you have this and one hour you have something totally different is not only a joy for the listeners but it serves the greater community. Larry Block uh, speaking when, uh, for uh, a piece mm. from 2008 about community radio in Brattleboro. All right, Joe, the, that's it for our uh, special gallery walk Halloween spooky election coverage uh, extended edition of 545 Live. That's all I've got. I'll let folks uh, get out there and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Uh, so um, unless you've got uh, any further comments to add to folks. Rock and roll. Uh, get Skate out Park there. Park Design Meeting coming up next week. That's right. Enjoy that gallery walk as well. We'll see you all on Tuesday for some uh, additionally exciting uh, live election night coverage, including Joe live from the high school with Annette Cappy, where you'll be, Absolutely. if you're watching uh, BCTV, you'll be the first to hear the election results. All right. That's make sure and vote. Whatever you do, just get out and vote. If you need a ride, call someone. They'll give you a ride, but make sure and vote. Absolutely. Night, everybody.